football player impresses us, a good speaker impresses us, a good student impresses us and also somebody who is a good man manager or a good cook impresses us. We say that he is a talented cook or she is a talented dancer or she is a talented organizer. Where from this word talent came? We discuss talent today and talent or being good at something is often attributed to genes and upbringing. In this episode, we will try to demystify and debunk this myth that talent is always necessarily related to DNA or upbringing. So we must know how the brain functions. Human brain, when it gives signal for one particular thing to be done well, it works as a closed circuit of various nerve which are bundled together to send that signal. These are covered by a substance called myelin and this myelin works as an insulator of the nervous system as something which works as a catalyst for improving the function of that particular set of nervous system giving a particular impulse. This circuit and the efficiency of this circuit ultimately translates into what we call talent. You will be surprised as I was surprised that we have much more control than we think we have over our own talents or over the talents of those which we nurture and mentor like our children, our students, our team members. Studies have shown that talent depends on repetitive impulses being given a particular set of nerves which are responsible for one particular act. It is like the agile system as we define in the modern digital world. The more you commit mistakes, the more you learn and the more perfect you are. Somebody who is playing a violin, if he or she keeps on playing the same old song she likes or she has mastered, then the nerves are not looking at newer skills like a baby falling again and again learns to walk rapidly the brain must always get more impulses to commit those mistakes and bring out better impulses in coordination with other nervous system and eye coordination the vocal system or the vocal sound getting into an instrumental sound these are all coordination so first control over talent is a deep practice Deep practice is different from simple practice. Deep practice is a combination of different level of practice with focus, with continuous learning. Second important control for improvement of myelin is the impulse. Take for example an Indian Premier League in cricket or the Saregama type of music source on the TV. Earlier those boys who would have retired as gully cricketers in their life now have discovered because of the club owners going into the rural area finding young rustic talent bringing them and putting them under coach to improve their talent looking for that right impulse where exactly you can get that impulse in our days uh, Many of us went to physics because the impulse was that physics people were scoring high in the competitive examination and the training of physics used to prepare us better in mathematics, IQ, etc. Train your own mind or people who you develop with those impulses which will work as motivation to bring up the talent. Third important thing is a coach, a right teacher who can facilitate faster learning, who can point out mistakes so that the myelin level, when we try things differently, in a different way, giving a lot of time. Malcolm Gladwell told that it requires 10,000 hours of 
practice to get to be very good at anything. It may be a little euphemistically speaking, but the fact remains that it requires a lot of practice and practice as I told you, deep practice with the right impulse and having a coach who need not be great in the same trade, but who knows how to point the mistakes and bring back those impulses so that the myelin grows. So good luck. You can develop your own talent. You can do the deep practice, which is the core of everything. In spite of a good teacher or in spite of a good impulse, if you do not have practice, it will not happen. But talent is quite a bit in your control.